So in a lot of my videos, I've been talking about how the iPad Pro is one of the best productivity tools out there. And although I love iPad OS 15 and all the cool features that it has, what makes the iPad Pro so useful is the apps. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about some of my favorite iPad Pro productivity apps to help you get things done, whether you're a student, whether you're somebody that just needs to take notes all the time or anybody that uses their iPad Pro for business. In this video, I'm gonna have some note-taking apps, industry-leading photo editing app, and also I'm gonna be talking about an app that signs documents if you're into that. And I'm gonna be discussing a few more apps, so stay tuned. But before I do get into the video, I'm gonna kindly ask you at home to hit the subscribe button. If you are not subscribed, it really helps my channel grow and I do appreciate it. And I'm gonna be doing a HomePod mini giveaway. All you gotta do is subscribe and then comment down below letting me know that you subscribed or by just commenting on your thoughts on the video. Let's get into it. All the apps that I mentioned today will be linked in the description below. So you can go ahead and download the apps and give it a try. Let's get right into it. The first app that I'm really excited to talk about is Penbook. This is a note-taking app that is pretty full-fledged and allows you to do a lot of things very intuitively. Now I know there are a lot of options like Good Notes or Notability, but I feel like this one visually looks the best and to me it works with the way I take notes. So with Penbook, you can take high quality notes and keep them stored in various different virtual notebooks. They also have different formats to choose from like regular note taking, lecture notes and a grid and there's like a bunch of other templates. When you're in a note, you can do some pretty cool things like the basics, which is highlighting text, copying and moving a note, but then you have other cool features like a ruler, adding washi tape, which is a useful way to organize your notes, adding photos, and it even has a scratch pad for extra notes. So I know summer kind of just started, well, it's halfway done. If you're a student looking for a good note-taking app, I'd highly recommend Penbrook just because of all the customization, all the different features that it has, and it starts off as free. So why wouldn't you download it? One more thing that I should mention about this app is that it allows you to export the files to a PDF. So that means that you can export it and save it on your computer or print it out if you need to and use it for notes if you're reviewing anything. The next app is Drafts. So Drafts is a pretty bare bone note taking app. This is not something that is full featured and has like a bunch of different tabs and all that stuff. It is a good app for taking notes. And let's say that you're on the go, you really thought of an idea, you don't want any of the fluff, you don't need to worry about a lot of setup, you can just get right into it and quickly take a note, then Drafts is the app for you. And not only does it work on the iPad, there's a Drafts app for iPhone, Apple Watch, you can even use it on your MacBook. Let's say you just thought of an invention that makes Steve Jobs proud, then you want to quickly take it down so you don't forget it later you can just look at your apple watch or take out your ipad pro and take down a quick note and be able to look at it later so the way i use it is i'll take a note in drafts and then i'll convert it to one of my other note taking apps a cool feature with drafts is that it has dictation and that allows you to just say your notes out loud and then the app will translate your voice to text it's really cool for lectures or meetings that you need to have transcribe. So for my photographers out there, whether you're amateur or pro, you might want to look into Lightroom. If you are a pro photographer, you most likely know what Lightroom is. It's Adobe's photo editing software and it's on the MacBook Pro, but I tend to use it on the iPad Pro as of recently. And it means that I can do mobile editing on the go pretty much anywhere I am. I can edit photos on the iPad Pro and it helps me remain so productive. I was on a trip recently. Somebody hit me up and asked me to edit photos. I did not have my MacBook with me. All I had was my iPad, but that was not a barrier. I was able to edit photos and send them back to the client and get paid while I'm on vacation. Why not? Lightroom has a few cool features. It has custom filters that you can build yourself, but it also has some pre-made filters which look pretty good. So let's say you don't know where to start and you want a cool filter, you can just use one of the filters in the app and then edit your photo that way. Now, if you were to compare the full-fledged Lightroom on the desktop versus the iPad Pro version, I honestly do not see a difference. The only reason why I feel like I'll go to edit photos in Lightroom on the computer now is if the iPad is not available 
or let's say I really have a lot of files and I need to store them somewhere, then it's a lot easier to just do it on my MacBook rather than doing it on my 128 gig iPad Pro. But other than that though, it's honestly one of the best photo editing apps. Although it's not free, if you already do have uh, Adobe Suite, then you might as well use Lightroom. I bought a house earlier this year and I had to sign a lot of documents. And during that time, I was looking for easy apps that allows me to sign documents. And I stumbled across PDF Viewer. This app is free to download and it has a lot of cool features in the free version, including signing documents. If you're somebody that goes through PDF documents a lot, you're gonna wanna look into PDF Viewer. Of course, there are other alternatives. A lot of them don't really allow you to annotate or sign in the free versions, but PDF Viewer does. It also has some pretty cool features other than signing documents like highlighting text, adding photos, looking up words, adding notations and callouts, and you can also do text redaction in the pro version. And that's pretty cool if you're into some shady stuff. You could also change the appearance of the PDF. You can make it black, white, make it look more like a notebook, whatever you want. You can do it in the free version of PDF Viewer. I definitely recommend this app if you're looking for a cool PDF editing app. It definitely answered my prayers and solved a lot of my problems. And the last app that I wanna highlight here is Pocket. Have you ever been scrolling through the interweb and you found an article but you're like just about to leave the house so you just can't read it but you want to read the article so that's where pocket comes in it allows you to do offline reading and all you got to do is go to the article hit share and save it to pocket once you save it to pocket it's available offline to you to read at the time that you're available so this is really convenient if you're somebody that just does not have a lot of time but still likes to read and puts time aside for that then pocket is a cool app for you it has a couple of other cool features as well like some of the other apps you could highlight text you can visit the actual website that the article was posted by using the built-in web viewer. You can add tags to a notes for organization. And a cool feature that it has is the ability to read the article out to you. You found a cool article, you're about to leave, you don't have time to read it, but you really want the information that's in that article for let's say a meeting that you got coming up. What you can do is save it to pocket, head in the car, connect to Bluetooth audio, and it'll read the note or the article out loud. So that way you can hear it. It's really similar to audio in that sense and it's a really intuitive app so I recommend using Pocket. Well, that's it. Those are some of my favorite productivity apps that helps me get a lot of things done using the iPad Pro. And if you have any other alternatives or any other cool apps that you want me to check out, drop them in the comments below. I'm always looking for new apps. So if you can help me out, why not drop a comment below? Again, don't forget to subscribe to enter the HomePod mini giveaway announced at 1K subs. All you gotta do is subscribe, comment down below, and you're entered. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.